Paritanaya Sadhunam, Paritanaya Sadhunam, Vinashaya Chaduskritam, Vinashaya Chaduskritam, Dharma Samstapanataya, Dharma Samstapanataya, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, Ladies, Paritanaya Sadhunam, Paritanaya Sadhunam, Vinashaya Chaduskritam, Vinashaya Chaduskritam, Dharma Samstapanathaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Paritranaya Sadhunam Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Chadushkritam Vinashaya Chadushkritam Dharma Samstapanathaya Dharma Samstapanathaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Paritanaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Chaduskritam According to Bhagavad Gita, this is the purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. According to Bhagavad Gita, a sadhu, holy man, is a man who is Krishna conscious. No, wait a minute. Is a man in Krishna consciousness. A person may appear to be irreligious, but if he has the qualifications of Krishna consciousness wholly and fully, he is to be understood to be a sadhu. Sometimes it happens that the sadhus are chanting Hare Krishna against the local laws. Sometimes happens. So by strict strict rules they would be considered irreligious or breaking the law outlaws. But by higher principle, they're not breaking the law. They're in line with the supreme law, the supreme lawgiver. 
súlade s tým, ktorý dáva najvyšší zákon. I'll give you another example. Let's say that there's a man working in a company, big company. Dám vám príklad. Povedzme, že je muž, ktorý pracuje vo veľkej spoločnosti. And his supervisor, he has a foreman in his department. A je ho nadredený v jeho proste departmente. And the department head says at 3 o'clock I want all the members of our department to assemble, we're going to do something. So, just before 3 o'clock, the owner of the whole company comes by. And picks out this man and says, you come with me, I need your help. He says, I know, but uh, the department head wanted me to be here at 3 o'clock, it's in a few minutes. He said, we have something important to do. Don't worry, I'll talk with him afterwards, it'll be all right. So what should he do? Well, most likely he would go with the owner of the company. And the foreman might be upset for the time being. Now, If he leaves a message with one of his other workers, tell the foreman that the owner took me for some engagement. So now the, the colleague tells the foreman when he comes. The owner took him for some engagement. So what should the foreman say? Čo má potom povedať ten, ako, ten uh, vedúci to oddelenie? Foreman should say, very good, thank you. Čo má povedať, veľmi dobre, ďakujem. But if the foreman says, wait a minute. Ale keď ten vedúci oddelenia povie, počkaj chvíľu. How can he interrupt my work? Ako on môže proste narušiť takú moju prácu? This was a very important thing at 3 o'clock. To bola veľmi dôležitá vec o 3. You go here, take this note, and go give it to that worker and tell him to come back here right now. No, now he's, he's not in line with the owner. He's forgetting that the, fo the foreman is forgetting that he's also under the owner's direction. So everyone needs to remember that they're under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That means the kings, The government leaders, the religious leaders, the mothers, the children, everyone. And if Krishna calls, then we all have to come. Just like when Krishna was in Vrindavan and one day the coward boy said, we're hungry. So Krishna said, okay, go to the brahmanas in the area and ask them in my name to please give some food. Brahmanas said, no, it's not the right time. We're doing our yagya, we can't be disturbed. Then Krishna said, okay, the boys came back and said they wouldn't give anything. 
Krishna said, okay, go to their wives, their devotees, they'll give. So they went to the wives and the wives immediately brought everything they had to Krishna and Balaram. Who's, who's higher, who's more advanced? The Brahmanas knew Sanskrit, the wives didn't know Sanskrit. The Brahmanas knew all the rules and regulations of the yogya. The wives didn't know all those things. The Brahmanas had performed Brahmacharya, they had taken Brahmacharya training. They had studied the Vedas. The wives didn't do that. But the wives were more advanced because they naturally agreed to carry out the requests of Krishna. Continuing. And Tishrik and Tushkritam applies to those who do not care for Krishna consciousness. Such miscreants or Duskritam are described as foolish and the lowest of mankind, even though they may be decorated with mundane education, whereas a person who is 100% engaged in Krishna consciousness is accepted as a sadhu, even though such a person may be neither learned nor well cultured. Takíto najnižší hodníci duškritovia sú opísaní ako najlepejšie a najnižšie bytosti ľudského pokolenia, a to aj keby získali hoci najvyššie svetské vzdelanie. Na druhej strane ten, kto dokonale a s láskou a odnalnosťou slúži Krišnovi je sádhu, aj keď nie je vzdelaný alebo kultúrne vyspelý. In the early days of the Krishna consciousness movement, čiže v začiatkoch Krišna vedomia, the movement that was inaugurated by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. Not a new movement, it's the same movement of Lord Chaitanya, but He re-established it in the West. So when He took His Western followers to India, some of the Indian people objected. They said these people are malachas. Malacha means mediators. So Prabhupada said they're not mediators. They were malachas, but now they're not. And some of the people in India said, but first they have to give up this life and the next life they have to be born in a family of Brahmanas. Then they can become Brahmanas. And Prabhupada said, no. They have chanted Hare Krishna. They have given up sinful activities. They are Brahmanas now. One time, some of those caste brahmanas told one of Prabhupada's disciples that it's very good that you're doing, that you're chanting and doing all these things, because this way in your next life you can take birth in a brahman family and you can do the puja. <laughs> And Prabhupada said, what did you say to him? And the devotee said, well, I didn't say anything, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, what you should have said was, you should have said, it's very nice that you're doing the puja, the temple worship. In this way, in your next life, you can take birth in a Western family and become a Hare Krishna devotee. 
ako kúžu v tom chráme, lebo že v ďalšom živote sa bude môcť narodiť ako Hare Krishna na západe, bude nejaké na západe a stať sa Hare Krishna proste. So, in other words, surrendering to Krishna in giving one's life is more important than all the other so-called important things. Surrendering one's life to Krishna fully is more important than all the other so-called uh, religious or pious things. In other words, some people think that if one has a Brahman thread around his shoulder, that makes him a Brahmana. Brahman thread you can buy in India for a few cents. Doesn't cost very much. But simply a thread doesn't make one a Brahmana. And simply wearing tilak and neck beads doesn't make one a devotee. Some people may wear tilak and neck beads, but they may be Kali Chela. They may be servants of Kali. So it's a little difficult sometimes for the common man to ascertain who's for real and who's not for real. We have ways of knowing. We have the Shastra, the scriptures, and we have the Guru, the spiritual master, and we have the sadhus, the saintly persons. Just like the, the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, they're great sadhus. Everyone recognized them as great sadhus. They were so saintly and so renounced. And so learned. And so devoted to Krishna. That, and they have given so many books to explain what are the characteristics of a sadhu. So there's no need to be confused about that. Continue. As far as the atheistic are concerned, it is not necessary for the Supreme Lord to appear as he is to destroy them as he did with the demons Ravana and Kangsa. The Lord has many agents who are quite competent to vanquish demons. What are some of those agents? One at a time, yeah. Wait, one at a time, go ahead. What is it? Yes. Yes, he has earthquakes. Earthquake is arranged by Bhumi or some combination of demigods. Wars. Yes, that's a good one. Can, you know, so many demons can be lined up and they, okay, now shoot each other. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada told a story about when he was in school in India. There was one teacher that had two mischievous students. So he told them, okay, both of you come up here. 
They both came up and he said, now you hold each other's ears. And when I say pull, you pull. So now they're each holding each other's ears and they're pulling. And it's hurting. So when one gets hurt, then he pulls the other one's harder and then the other one pulls harder. <laughs> So the teacher didn't have to touch either student. The one mischievous boy pulled the ears of the other and this way they, they gave the results to each other. So similarly, as you say, war is a good one. They all assemble, all the, the miscreants, and then they pull each other's ears. <laughs> so, there's so many agents that Krishna has, he doesn't have to personally get involved. But Kangsa and Ravana, they were very formidable demons. And the demigods could not defeat them. So Krishna likes that kind of a challenge. When the demigods go and they say, Krishna, we tried, we can't. This, this demon is too much for us. Krishna said, okay, let's go. You come with me, don't be afraid. Krishna likes that kind of challenge. But most of the demons, like we have ordinary demons walking on the street, they don't require Krishna to personally come. One tsunami, a thousand wiped out. <laughs> so it's not difficult. These are the agents Krishna is referring to, or Prabhupada is referring to. <laughs> so, but the Lord especially descends to appease his unalloyed devotees who are always harassed by the demoniac. So, this is natural that Krishna wants to protect his dear devotees. Krishna doesn't even mind so much if someone tries to harass him. But he's especially concerned that his devotees not become harassed. It is like if a father is walking with his little son. So, if somebody comes up to him and says abusive words, he doesn't talk, he doesn't mind, that's okay, he keeps walking. But if the man starts to go for his son, no, he doesn't tolerate that at all, not for one second. The man may be saying, you're a nonsense and you're this. Yeah, that's okay, that's all right. Just keep walking. And then if he says, and your son, and he goes over to his son. No, then the father doesn't tolerate. So Krishna doesn't appreciate when the devotees are harassed. And he personally comes. He doesn't send somebody else, he personally comes.
The demon harasses the devotee even though the latter may happen to be his kin. Although Prahlad Maharaj was the son of Hiranyakashipu, he was nonetheless persecuted by his father, although Devaki, the mother of Krishna, was the sister of Kamsa. She and her husband Vasudev were persecuted only because Krishna was to be born of them. Recently I was speaking with some devotees and they were complaining they were explaining that members of their family were very much inimical to their Krishna consciousness practice. So, what to do in such a what to do in what to do in such a circumstance? We have to depend on Krishna. What did Prahlad Maharaj do in such a circumstance? He he remembered Krishna. When difficulties arise, that's an impetus for remembering Krishna and calling out to Krishna more. So the devotees practice chanting so that even in the most difficult circumstance they'll chant and remember Krishna. And Krishna always knows what's going on. Krishna will not neglect to take care of his devotee. He says in Bhagavad Gita, Konte Apratijani Name Bhakta Pranashati. You may declare it boldly, my Dear Arjuna, that my devotee shall never be vanquished. So, Lord Krishna appeared primarily to deliver Devaki rather than kill Kangsa, but both were performed simultaneously. Therefore, it is said that to deliver the devotee and vanquish the demon miscreants, the Lord appears in different incarnations. Oh. So far as everything makes sense, everyone understands what we're speaking about. Does it all make sense? How Krishna protects. Now, someone may say, well, why is he protecting one and killing the other? It seems like favoritism. Just like sometimes when there's trouble between two countries, the people of their country say, pray to God to protect the people of our country. And pray to God to kill the people of the other country. But Krishna, or God, is not partial. He loves all souls. And he protects them all. But when they misbehave, then he chastises them. It's like the father. Father loves all of his children equally, but if one one of his children is beating the other, then he chastises that child. Ako otec má všetky svoje deti rovnako rád, ale keď nejaké dieťa bije to druhé, tak potom 
to dieťa, čo bije to druhé, tak ho potrestá. That's not favoritism, that's keeping the peace. Nie je nejako nádržiavanie alebo strajenie, ale to je udržiavanie mieru. And the king or the chatrio or the government is supposed to act like Krishna in dealing with the miscreants and with the devotees. The king or the government is supposed to be acting as Krishna's representative. Same thing with the parents. All the leaders in society are supposed to be acting as Krishna's representatives. So in order to do that, they need to know what Krishna wants them to do. They need to know Krishna. Then they can be good leaders. And if they don't know Krishna or what Krishna wants, then they can't be good leaders. Okay, so if there's any questions, I can... Yes? Yeah. I want to ask you about this uh, taking shelter. Uh, you know, that uh, sometimes it's mentioned that a pure devotee is not asking Krishna for, for nothing. He wants only to be his servant and serve him at this body or that lifetime. He asking only for service. Is it if we ask Krishna for some protection, some you know we are in fear, you know, is it not that we want something for some like business exchange, you know, like mm. a lower class of bhakti? Uh. <laughs> A že keď od Krišnu žiadame, keď máme nejaký strach, nejakú úzkosť, a že či to není nejaká nižšia úroveň bhakti, že my vlastne od Krišnu niečo chceme ako... There is different approaches. For example, when the demigods are in fear, they call out, Krishna, please save us. And they are calling out for being saved because they are afraid of their bodies being destroyed, their kingdoms being destroyed, they are afraid of losing their positions, etc. They are afraid of pain. So they call Krishna, save us. That's good. But afterwards, they, they apologize. They say, Krishna, we're sorry that we only called you when we were in difficulty. <laughs> when we're enjoying, when everything's very nice, then we sometimes forget you. Still, that's piety. If one calls on Krishna in danger, that's good. But we should remember Krishna, call on Krishna, even when we're not in danger. Or when we think we're not in danger. Actually, we're always in danger in the material world. There's danger at every step here. So, that's one type of, that's one type of asking Krishna for something material. Now, when the, when the gopis and the coward boys, when they call out for to Krishna to save them from Indra. Or some demon, let's say Aristasura. 
Aisha Sura. They're not thinking the same way as the demigods. They're not really thinking that we this could be painful and we could lose our house and my body could become maybe harmed. I'll lose my position, what will people think? That doesn't enter their mind. They're just taking it that here's a good opportunity, this demon has come to give us a good excuse to call upon Krishna, to remember Krishna more. Because they love Krishna and they're always just waiting for the opportunity to be with Krishna and to call out Krishna. Just like sometimes a devotee is walking down the street in the city and he's dressed as a devotee. I mean, you know, with, with our devotional attire. So some people across the way, they say, Hare Krishna, and they start dancing. So what does he do? He also starts dancing and singing Hare Krishna. <laughs> because he might have said, well, they're making fun of me. But he doesn't care whether they're making fun or joking about him. He takes it as an opportunity to chant Hare Krishna. Sometimes they say, why aren't you dancing? How come you're not dancing? So then, yes, you're right, I should, I should be dancing. I should be chanting. So he takes everything as an impetus for chanting and for remembering Krishna. That's a higher level. Both are good. It depends on what level one is at. For the demigods, it was very good to remember and pray to Krishna for protection. But we should actually know that Krishna is aware of everything. He knows that I'm in danger. He knows he's watching, he's protecting me. But even though we may know that, sometimes we still may become overcome by fear. So in that sense, you can definitely call out for Krishna. Okay. So it's, it's good, yes. I would like to ask about the point regarding tsunami, earthquakes and wars. Is that always the demons are smashed by this, you know, catastrophe? Or, you know, because we can see you know, so many innocent people or, you know, even devotees uh -huh. live up the life in such a in a uh -huh. catastrophe. Okay, good question. Ja sa pýtam, že, že či je to vždycky tak, že keď Krišna nezabíja osobne tých šémonov veľkých a posiela vlastne tie prírodné rôzne Generally, generally most of the victims are in the miscreant category. Most. But there may be some who are taking the opportunity to go back to Godhead. Just like on the airplanes. Most of them are miscreants drinking and smoking and eating meat. But, but on every airplane there may be a few devotees also sneaking in there, flying, taking advantage of the airplane. Okay. 
because most people are miscreants in this world. What's the percentage? I think it's a large percentage. So naturally, if there's a big catastrophe, most of the victims will be the miscreants because there's more of them. But if some devotees also get swept away by a tsunami, then they, they're not being punished, they're being delivered. Okay. I like uh, this uh, story about uh, uh, Brahmana's wives. They have their love and spont spontaneous. But I, I feel in my devotional service sometimes as, as this Brahmana's rules and Yes, we have to follow some of the rules and regulations as we're given by the Shastras and the spiritual master. But we have to remember some of the other principles also. In other words, there's higher principles than simply following some rules. For example, in deity worship, it is said that the pujari, the one who's worshiping the deity, he has to be very punctual, he has to be on time in all of his worship. And he's not supposed to be interrupted or distracted by anything. But let's say on a particular day, a very advanced devotee happens to come at the same time when he's supposed to do his worship. So the higher principle is, he may temporarily see to the comforts of the visiting devotee and then resume his deity worship. But that, that's, in other words, there are principles, some of the principles are, shall we say, lower principles and some are higher principles. And as one gets trained in Krishna consciousness, he knows which principles are, are more important. Just like we see if, uh, I don't know if you use the, I do a lot of flying, so I go to the airport a lot. So they teach the, uh, what do you call them, the uh, ticket, the people at the ticket counter. They train them how to, to deal with different circumstances. And so in their training, they're taught that if this happens, then you do like this, and if this happens, if this happens, you push this button. Many different things. What they should do in different circumstances. So similarly, in devotional service, we're taught how to behave in different circumstances. And the advanced devotees, they're always perfect. They always know exactly what to do in every circumstance. That's why we like to be 
with advanced devotees because they always know what to do. They teach us how to behave in different circumstances. That's why we like to hear about the activities of the great devotees because they teach us how to behave in different circumstances. Že v podstate my sa obraciame na Krišnu, keď sme v tých zlých situáciách, akoby, a že či nás aj Krišna dáva vlastne náschvál nekedy do takých situácií, že aby sme sa vlastne obraciali na Neho, lebo vie, že... Opeš? Ne, Nie, proste, že väčšinou sa obraciame na Krišnu, keď máme ako nejaké problémy. Že či nás on niekedy náschvál dáva do tých ako problémov, aby sme sa obracali na ňa. Does Krishna put us in problems deliberately? So, um, I have a question for the answer now. And what if I say yes? Will you become less appreciative of Krishna? Either way is okay. Either way, yes. Yes, Krishna may do it deliberately. Actually, everything is deliberate by Krishna. But it's out of love. And it's under protection. Just like the father may let the child, some little dog comes. So the father may let the child you know, get close to the dog. But if the child becomes frightened, then the father is right there. So the father is always watching to make sure there is no danger. Krishna is always protecting. Yes, Krishna allows these things to happen or arranges these things to happen for the advancement of the devotee. But it's also because we want it. We want to be in the material world, therefore we have to take some dangers. If you don't want so many dangers, then why do you stay in the material world? Why don't you just surrender to Krishna and engage in Krishna consciousness? We like this kind of adventure. Excitement. <laughs> Not kind of doing mischievous things. We like that, being mischievous. You know what a mischievous child is? You say, now you sit there. And he says, yeah. As soon as the teacher turns around, he throws something at the teacher. He knows he may get in trouble, but he likes it anyway. <laughs> And he may have to stay after school. So then his friends may say, why, do you, why did you do that? He said, I like it. He said, but you have to stay after school. He said, it was worth it. So the miscreants think that it's worth all the risk, all the trouble, 
to try to enjoy the way they want to enjoy. Okay, any other? Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.